Your story is garbage news, and you're making, you're making an embarrassment of your news station. All right, why are these people so upset with ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscabing? Take a look at this. Why are they having someone follow him in a car, recording his every move? It's because of the three-month investigation you're about to see. So here's Dave to explain. This is all about parking lots, parking lots and disability access. Under the Americans with Disability Act, businesses need enough spaces, enough space between spaces, proper signs at the proper height and that little van notice. But miss one, be just an inch off and there's a new group who will sue and demand thousands to settle. They say it's advocacy. Others call it extortion. You watch and you decide. This is Advocates for Individuals with Disabilities, AID for short. Founded this year, their videos show them handing out things like a special brace, a scooter, and a window AC unit. There's nothing controversial about that. But what is controversial is how they make money. It's with lawsuits, hundreds and hundreds of them, bringing in millions of dollars. Lawsuits filed by AID along with this man. As disabled people, we don't have a voice. David Ritzenthaler is 74, had hip surgery last year. A self-proclaimed minister. Listen to what God had to say. He considers his lawsuits for aid public service. And I said, I love what you're doing. Ritzenthaler's filed 530 lawsuits this year. Restaurants, banks, offices. This minister even sued this strip club. He's a committed individual. Peter Stroynick is attorney for both David Ritzenthaler and aid. David Ritzenthaler gone to all 500 of those businesses? No. But he's, he's the plaintiff. Yes. And the question is? So he doesn't have to go for you to sue the business? Absolutely correct. Really? Yeah. Critics call them drive-by lawsuits because aid staff crews parking lots looking for violations. This auto parts store got sued. Why? I didn't have a van accessible sign. For that, owner Bob Curtis says aid wanted 5,000 to settle. Yeah, $50 sign for 5,000 bucks. To me, it's extortion. Is that really an accessibility issue that requires a lawsuit? Oh, yes. To aid, any violation is discrimination, and they plan to file 100,000 of these lawsuits across the country. The purpose is to do something incredibly good. We are trying to affect a change. We don't want more lawsuits. But Phil Pangrazio says they're hurting, not helping. So does John Moore. Harms all of our efforts. And Larry Wanger. And abusing the laws. These well-known advocates run three prominent Arizona disability organizations. High frequency lawsuit filing is giving the ADA a bad name. They really are distancing themselves from you guys. They don't want anything to do with you. What do you think that says? Well, that says that we are probably going to be the most effective advocacy group of any advocacy group that had ever been established. And that seems ironic. So this is where they do business. Because at the parking lots for two buildings where aid operates, we found low signs. 41. Spaces with no signs. Two spots coming up. Around this entire building, not a single van notice, including the spot. They're missing the sign. Right in front of aid's door. There we also found faded paint and a ramp overrunning and blocking the access lane. We'll have to check on that. That's not good. A big violation, says ADA compliance so expert two, Peter three, Fisher. Or are they in compliance, yes or no? No. Even close? No. And when we went inside to ask Aid about the parking lots, out came their spokesperson, Jennifer Rogers, and Alex Callen, a legal assistant. We checked both this location and your other location where you guys have the check sent, and they're not, neither one of them are in compliance with the ADA. I don't know if you guys knew that. Uh, I don't know if you know that, but this is not a building of public accommodation. That's why Aid says this building doesn't have to comply. But our expert disagrees, and Aid must be worried about us checking. 58, that's right. Because they sent out this employee to film us and walk with us until she broke her shoe, ended up barefoot. She then got in a car and started filming while driving at points swerving close to us. We don't want you to hit us, so we're going to go in this spot area, so I don't know what you need to do to work around us. We just don't. Okay, thank you. We just worry about people using their phones and driving a little bit, so. And all this really comes down to one thing. You're gonna sue other businesses for not having these access issues. You brought people to this building who have disabilities. You don't think that maybe that uh, you should hold yourselves to the same standards as the places you guys are suing? Would you guys like to leave? And when we left, they left us with this That's final story. thought. Your story is garbage news. And you're making, you're making an embarrassment of your new station. Thank you. Aid claims they've asked their landlord to fix those issues, but hasn't sued them. And if you think what we found in their parking lot raises more questions about their organization, you're right. And we found not all of their answers add up. Our investigation continues tomorrow night at 6.
All right, so as you saw, advocacy groups with deep roots in our community disagree with what aid is doing, but that doesn't mean this isn't an important issue. So that's why for businesses, we've got the rules and regulations you need to know to help you be in compliance, serve your community, and avoid a lawsuit. It is all on a special web page dedicated to this issue, abc15.com slash lawsuits. I have it on tape. David. And the country. State. That man has sued hundreds of Valley businesses this year, and you can see, obviously, he has had enough of our questions. Yeah, he's not having it anymore tonight. ABC 15's Dave Biscopin continues to investigate a flood of disability lawsuits sweeping the Valley. If you missed part one of our investigation, here's a quick rundown. That man is with this group, Advocates for Individuals with Disabilities or AID. They have teams cruising parking lots across the valley looking at disability access. Whether it's not enough spaces or a sign too low, they will sue and demand thousands to settle. Their methods are controversial, raise questions, and we found not all of their answers add up. This is AID star plaintiff, David Ritzenthaler. Obviously, I didn't get up to greet you. It's mm. not easy to get up and out of my chair. He says he had hip surgery last year. How do you get around as a cane? As a... Well, I hope it's with a cane. Bad days, I'm in a wheelchair. And he's filed so many lawsuits this year, he either didn't know the number or didn't want to tell us. I believe about 160. Yeah. 160? Yeah. It's not 160. That's not even close. Okay. It's 530. In fact, he signed every one under the penalty of perjury. I'm estimating. Mm -hmm. He's a committed individual. Peter Stroynik is the lawyer who's filing lawsuits for David Ritzenthaler and aid. Our method is good and proper and ethical. To help prove his point, he repeatedly tried telling us they don't sue mom and pop businesses. We sue lawbreakers. We don't sue mom and pop. That is a totally false statement. Lisa Chrisman runs a small children's clothing shop with the help of her own mom, who also has a disability. Four generations have helped in this store. For Lisa, there was no notice, no idea she was going to be sued until a man walked up to her front desk and handed her a lawsuit. I did this. So stretch for cash. A few weeks ago. Lisa made her own stencil, repainted, fixed issues herself. I don't have the money. There's a lot of mom and pops that are scraping by. Well, you're suing mom and pop shops. We talk about, no, I'm not suing mom and pop shops. Oh, I've, I've, is, I've seen the cases. Time out. You, you, cer you certainly time are. Out. Time, time out, counselor. Settlements usually range between three and 7,000, multiplied by hundreds, soon to be thousands of cases. That's millions of dollars. Stroynik claims he donates everything to aid. Nothing. You're taking zero dollars. See how many? Zero. What about his client, David Ritzenthaler? At first, he claimed... I get not a cent. Does he get paid anything for this? Yes. How come your lawyer said he gives you money? They do not give me money. Either $100 or 75 goes to Ritzenthaler. Do the math. 100 a case, 530 cases. That's more than 50000 for simply signing his name. Ritzenthaler eventually said he donates it to, but not to aid, to a different charity he runs, Total Life Ministries, but still doesn't get a cent. So how come you didn't tell me that you were taking money and putting it into a 501c3 before? Because I didn't know how technical you were going to ask me of questions. But tax records for Total Life Ministries show, as CEO, he can certainly pay himself that money and has paid himself a salary in the past. Yeah. That's why we went to pay him another visit. Well, you said you don't make a dime from it, but you no, pay yourself I, a salary out of it. I, no, I didn't say that. You have things a little screwed up. David, also one other thing. Uh, how long have you been walking without a cane? Whenever I get a chance, if it's a few feet, I don't walk more than about, in fact, I don't have it in this one. I carry a cane in the car with me just because. But not today? I don't have it in here today because I just expected to walk. It appears this day, he also didn't on? have a disability placard or license plate. Actually, any license plate. But Ritzenthaler and his lawyers say, under the law, he is physically disabled. Remember, that's something he emphasized to us here, cane by his side. Obviously, I didn't get up to greet you. But we went undercover. Here he is, the same day of that interview. Here he is again, a week later. And here, a month before that interview. You told us that and you I, hope you'd be able to get around just with a cane, never without a cane. Have you exaggerated no, to I us? Didn't say that. I hope it's with a cane. Bad days, I'm in a wheelchair. I, I have it on tape. David. In the country. State. One more thing about Mr. Ritzenthaler. He's no longer putting his name on lawsuits, but that doesn't mean he's not involved. He says he's now a director for AIDS, so we asked if he'd be taking a salary. He told us he doesn't know. 
He doesn't make those decisions. And as for aid, they're not filing lawsuits without a person, listing itself, the organization, as the victim. And as of right now, they're up to more than 1,000 lawsuits across the valley. I'm Investigator Dave Biscoving, ABC 15 News. Wow, just incredible work there done by our investigators. Yeah. And just a reminder, too, for businesses out there, we do have a special website here with the specific things you need to know to get your parking lots in compliance. You can pick your jaws mm -hmm. up yeah. and then go to abc15.com slash lawsuits. Keep an eye out. Dave will have more stories coming at you next week. Somehow you want to make it all sound really bad. Let me just tell you this. There's nothing bad there. There's no there there. This lawyer has sued more than 1,300 businesses for ADA violations. His name is Peter Stroynick, and he works for a group called Advocates for Individuals with Disabilities. We've been telling you about them for the last couple of weeks now. Tonight, ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscobing exposes mistakes in the cases and why he's now under state bar investigation. Joanne Burgess doesn't think much of the lawyer who sued her and demanded thousands to settle. Pretty ticked off. Uh, I've got a stronger word, but I won't use it. She owns this building, her current tenant, a coffee shop. Their violation, they didn't have this van sign. I felt that what they were doing was totally and completely unethical, so I wrote a letter to the State Bar. ABC 15 has confirmed the State Bar has at least two open investigations against attorney Peter Stroynick. Two of the defendants became very grumpy, so what do grumpy people do? They try to intimidate. You think it's intimidation? Oh, yeah. Legal experts say while Stroynick's methods filing ADA lawsuits are controversial, it doesn't mean they're illegal. But there would be an issue if he's made mistakes. And our investigation found he has. I look at every case individually. Found a couple you've gotten wrong had to drop. Yeah, I know. For example, the owner of this building sued twice because Stroynick didn't realize he already sued them. In this parking lot, a judge tossed cases against multiple businesses because they were sued even though they don't own or control the lot. He even sued this patch of dirt. Apparently he mistook this dusty parcel of land for a neighboring location. And meet Sharon Olson. It's a shame. She owns a wedding and party rental shop in Mesa and says there's a major conflict of interest in her case. I, I can't believe Peter is suing us. Peter Stroynick sued her, even though records show he set up her business. What are these? These are so these uh, are my article of incorporation that Peter Stroynick wrote. Here is his signature. So Sharon wrote Stroynick to point out the conflict, but someone else with advocates for individuals with disabilities called back with an offer. And he said that they would drop the lawsuit if I would talk to their PR person. Instead, she's making a different call. Well, I'm actually calling the state bar today. And all of this isn't the first time Stroynick's been brought to the state bar's attention. How many times have you been sanctioned, reprimanded, disciplined by the state bar before? The state bar, you know, it's... It, it, Let's answer that first and then we'll move on to no, the No, no, it's a wonderful question because, right. because uh, state bar and I have a wonderful relationship. Mm -hmm. We entered into a friendly agreement that I would, uh, that I would go, that I would take 30 days off to deal with my suspended. Would, would, you can call it suspended. The state bar did a 30-day suspension in 2011 for conduct called frivolous, prejudicial, and insulting. The question I had is, how many previous <clears throat> state bar actions have they taken against you? I think, I think that was it. The correct answer is three. In fact, it's clearly marked on the State Bar's website. And in the last few days, we've learned there are even more businesses that have filed new complaints. Now, you can find all this information on a special website dedicated to this story. It's abc15.com slash lawsuits. In the newsroom, Dave Biscoving, ABC 15 News. Businesses, brace yourself. Another wave of ADA lawsuits is hitting the valley. A controversial group filed another 133 cases, bringing their total to more than 1,500 lawsuits. Advocates for Individuals with Disabilities says their mission is all about compliance, not money. But that's not what businesses tell ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscovic. After we broke our cash for compliance investigation, a spokesperson sent us a response saying in most cases there is no money. But tonight we take you inside two lawsuits under negotiation right now. So you can see what it's like to try and settle with these so-called advocates. At extra innings in Mesa, inside, you'll find a baseball practice center that's been open for the past three years. And outside, more than enough accessible parking. Two here, three out here. That's three owner out. Deanna yeah, France lot. pointing out all ten of the disability access spots in her parking lot. By law, she only needs six. But that didn't stop the unexpected lawsuit from Advocates for Individuals with Disabilities, or AID. Not a clue. We had no idea. So why did they sue her? 
signage issues. A few signs too low, two missing this van notice. Originally they wanted $10,000. Now they're asking, well then they were asking for us to fix it and $7,500. We fixed everything and asked that they drop it because it's all done and they said no, they'd like the $7,500. So Deanna offered to pay $1,000. She then received this letter back saying it didn't give aid much hope towards settlement. Aid's current counter offer, 7,000. So when we told Deanna, aid spokeswoman Jennifer Rogers said, most cases settle for no money. I think she's lying. It's about the money. Talk to as many businesses as we have, and we're talking dozens of them. You'll find the feeling is mutual. It, it really felt like I was haggling, haggling for a car or something. And Steve Fisher might know, because he owns this VW repair shop. It was blindsiding. This bug shop's parking lot had two accessible spaces, except one was missing a sign. The other had this spoof one. If you're not handicapped, move your effing car. He says it's the unofficial space for his wife's mom. Uh, Mother-in-law's, uh, she's a quadriplegic. She still has partial use of her hands, but she's in a wheelchair. So we, I think, have an idea of some of the troubles that people have to go through. And once Steve fixed his signs, he offered aid $1,500 to settle. Basically, they acted insulted by the 1500 bucks, and they went up. Instead of 7500 they went over ten grand. So they even increased it? They increased it. Come and out. to Steve, Verify that says everything. it all. They're into it for the bucks. It's plain and simple. Talk to them. Deal with them on the level we have, and you'll know why they're there. The money. The money. I'm investigator Dave Biscobing. ABC 15 News. A top executive calling it quits as we keep reporting on an ABC 15 investigation. Advocates for Individuals with Disabilities, or AID for short, is behind a wave of lawsuits aimed at Valley businesses. As we've been reporting, the suits are going after parking lots they say aren't in full compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act. AID calls themselves civil rights champions, but the businesses we've talked with say the group is really just about making money and has little interest in enforcing compliance. Tonight, AIDS Executive Director Jennifer Rogers has stepped down amidst the controversy. She sent us a statement by email reading in part, My role in public relations was to get information out about the Americans with Disabilities Act and help provide life-saving medical gifts to aid recipients. While the conversations, enforcement, and foundation giving are important, my personal ideals are not in alignment with the organization. Massive new developments today in ABC 15's investigation of a group of serial sewers who've been taking aim at Valley Businesses. The Attorney General's office now stepping in and it could shut them down. ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscobing has been digging into the Advocates for Individuals with Disabilities Foundation, AID for short. He's been doing it for months. He's on assignment today and joins us by phone. And Dave, what does today's development really mean? Well, AID has sued more than 1,500 businesses for alleged ADA violations and to settle, demands thousands to settle. And now the AG's office is essentially saying, hey, wait a minute, ADA compliance is not your job, that's our job. Now, the AG's office just intervened in a case this afternoon. Basically, that means they inserted themselves into the lawsuit and are challenging AID's authority to mass file these cases. In a motion, AG officials said AID is trolling for lawsuits and shouldn't be allowed to get fees. They even said it appears they are doing this for their own enrichment. And right now, in a typical case, aid is often demanding $7,500 to start from businesses. So AG officials told me they stepped in specifically because of our investigation and the things we uncovered about aid. Now, our reports are cited throughout their motion, and the AG's office is declining to comment, saying the motion speaks for itself. So it's not clear if they will expand to other cases. But one more thing I want to point out is that this is a civil action, and the state has a civil investigation open right now. But AG officials haven't ruled out the possibility of a criminal investigation. Dave, thanks. You've been all over it. it we do not believe the people that are filing these lawsuits are concerned about persons with physical disabilities. What they're more concerned about is shaking down private businesses. Arizona Attorney General Mark Burnovich speaking out and only to ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscovic. Now He wants to tell you the exact reasons he's stepping in to stop a so-called advocacy group that's hit Valley businesses with more than 1,700 ADA lawsuits. Here's Dave to tell us more about his exclusive interview. Actually, after our interview, we got some breaking news. A judge just ruled that the Attorney General's office can join in on these lawsuits as a defendant. And that means this group isn't just suing small businesses anymore, they're now also suing the AG. And if Mark Burnovich has his way, he's going to drop every one of these lawsuits, and he's vowing to fight this group until the end. 
this isn't something that we undertook haphazardly or lightly. I mean, this is something very significant. The Attorney General has had enough of all the lawsuits filed by advocates for individuals with disabilities or aid, a group that self-appointed itself a mass enforcer of disability access. We are charged with enforcing the Arizona Disabilities Act. How many complaints have, has this group filed with us? Zero, none, and, um, and I think that speaks volumes. The AG's office says it's their responsibility to enforce ADA law, not AIDS. And in the state's motion to intervene, the AG calls AIDS drive-by parking lot lawsuits trolling litigation tactics. So you agree with that? I mean, you think that what they're doing is they're out there looking to make some money. Does this sound like someone that's really concerned about people with physical disabilities, or does this sound like a business that's more concerned about making money off technical violations? Our investigation uncovered aid routinely sues businesses for having a sign a few inches too low, then demands thousands to settle. Uh, what we'd like to see is the businesses comply, not the businesses hauled into court, sued for tens of thousands of dollars, um, and ultimately what that does is that it, it has little or no impact on truly people that, are, that have physical disabilities. AIDS response, the AG's office has failed to do its job, that Brnovich is siding with law-breaking businesses, that this is a political move. Do you think that that's a fair criticism? They said this is political. No. Yeah, uh, that's, I think that's, that's garbage. Batches of ADA lawsuits have hit other cities in other states before, but AIDS doing it at an unprecedented rate. And after seeing our investigation, Brnovich says his office decided to make an unprecedented move to stop it. This has been going on in other states for some years, but I don't think any other attorney general has intervened. Is this, how, how do you think? You know, you know Dave, uh, frankly, I think your reporting has really brought a lot of attention, not only here in Arizona, but nationally to this issue. It's just something where Arizona is taking the lead on, on pushing back against um, these frivolous, what we call frivolous lawsuits. And I just think it's about time someone did something. The attorney general's office has also filed a motion to combine every one of these lawsuits into one. Now, a judge hasn't ruled on that yet, but if you want to see all of our reports, including the ones that prompted the AG's office to get involved, we have them all on a special website. It's abc15.com slash lawsuits. In the newsroom, I'm Dave Biscoving, ABC 15 News. Dave, thank you. And there is some new help for businesses out there. Leading disability organizations are hosting a pair of ADA workshops to help answer many of the questions that you have. Now, here are the details. They'll take place September 19th and 20th at Ability 360. That's located at 5025 East Washington in Phoenix. The cost is 25 bucks. You can register online, and we've got the full details on our website. Tonight, a so-called advocacy group Flooding the Valley with disability access lawsuits has been blocked from filing new cases, at, at least for now. A judge just ordered a temporary stop to those cases in a new ruling. Here's ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscobing with more on this major development. The temporary ban, the latest hit against a controversial group called Advocates for Individuals with Disabilities or AID. In fact, the judge also ruled every open lawsuit, about 1,100 of them, will now be combined into a single case. All I'm getting, frankly, is that one way or the other, people want them to shut down. And until, unless and until the ADA gets changed, that's not going to happen. The controversial group flooding the valley with disability lawsuits is fighting back. Advocates for Individuals with Disabilities has hired new lawyers to battle the Attorney General and some judges who are challenging their cases. The lead lawyer sat down with ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscobing and just wait until you see what Dave's uncovered now. This law firm will be arguing issues that could have a permanent impact not only on ADA cases in Arizona, but across the country. And that's why we decided to take a closer look at this firm. This is John Willencheck, and right now it's his job to prove why Advocates for Individuals with Disabilities has the right to file 1,700 lawsuits. Aid has to file a lot of lawsuits because there is a lot of problems with ADA compliance. We uncovered many aid lawsuits are over parking lot signs. A few inches too low, they demand thousands to settle. These are not frivolous lawsuits. Are you the lead attorney on this? I know that your name has been the, the top one. My name's on this, and I yeah. think I know where you're going with this, by the way, because I did actually defend two lawsuits against aid, ironically. Did you catch that? Willinchek defended businesses sued by aid this year, and now he switched sides. Is that a conflict? He says no. And I think that's given me kind of a unique perspective into why this is a problem. He says AIDS fight is one against discrimination and compared it to the Civil Rights Act. If these were businesses that were segregating against colored people, would that be okay? So we asked him to respond to specific allegations made against ADA sewers, like aid. ADA serial lawsuit litigants, they're a plague on the judicial system. They're exploiting the law. It's a cottage industry. These are professional plaintiffs, unscrupulous lawyers. They're fueled by greed, and they're just looking to get quick settlements. Do you think that's fair? 
I don't think that's fair, and here's why. Those statements assume that this is not an important issue. You know, it's funny, honestly, that you say that, because those are the exact terms that your firm made earlier this year. What we slid over, and he won't touch, a motion his firm filed earlier this year. John Willenchek, his father Dennis Willenchek, and Brian Hemd all listed on a case defending this restaurant against a different ADA sewer. That person, Damian Mosley, has sued 38 Arizona businesses, a number much smaller than AIDS' 1,700 lawsuits. In those terms, plague, abuse, greed, pulled straight from their firm's motion. And so I want to know... What's your responses to that? I've highlighted them starting on page two. Those are exactly taken right out of I've your never pleading. I've called this a plague, sir. It's in that case. I've never called this a plague. You're on that case. It's in that case. Can you point to me where it says plague in there? Absolutely. Page two. Highlighted. We are, they are a serial father. That's exactly what I've said. That's, that's a legal term. Plaintiffs such as this are a plague on the judicial system. That was the client's position in that case. Absolutely. Your firm wrote that. After the interview... By the time we got back to our office, a voicemail already waiting from Willenchek, saying he didn't work on that case and didn't write that specific motion. It was his father, Dennis Willenchek, and Brian Hemd who did, both of them now working with John, representing aid. So your firm sees no issue in arguing on both sides of an issue that you call a great discrimination issue? That's absolutely right. That's exactly what you have to do as a lawyer. In court, you represent your client and you say what they want you to say. I'm investigator Dave Biscovic, ABC 15 News. And stay tuned because tomorrow night at 6, Dave's investigation continues. He's going to reveal the behind-the-scenes money man who has funded this group. Reveal the behind-the-scenes money man funding the controversial group filing ADA lawsuits across the valley. ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscovic has been digging into his background for weeks. His name is Greg Crane. He's an entrepreneur. His professional history, one with investigations for consumer fraud. His personal history, one of tragedy. The question today, why is he funding the group Advocates for Individuals with Disabilities? Now, Crane turned down our interview requests, so we took our questions to that group's lawyer. Do you know who Mr. Greg Crane is? I know he's contributed a lot of money to aid. John Willenchek is an attorney for aid. And by a lot of money, we're talking 600000 at least. Startup funds aid used to file more than 1,700 ADA lawsuits. Are you aware of Mr. Crane's personal history, his business history? Many, many years ago, he had certain businesses um, that did have some legal troubles. My response to that is, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Um, this is a man whose wife died in a plane crash. Uh, his child died in a plane crash. He was left disabled. A deadly plane crash went down yesterday right after takeoff. That crash in August 2010. Gregory Crane and his children are said to be in critical condition tonight. In an email to ABC 15, Greg Crane said the crash sparked his passion for disability access and he wanted to help aid make a positive impact. His heart is in the right place here. But asked the businesses aid is sued for thousands and thousands of dollars, many for having a parking sign just inches too low. It's about the money. The money. $50 sign for 5000 bucks. Greg Crane's professional history is in helping his cause. In 2000, the feds brought a civil case against a Yellow Page website Crane helped run as operations director and board member. Officials said they deceived businesses with bogus rebate checks. The company settled, agreeing to issue refunds. And buried in old court records, we found in the 90s, Greg Crane consented to violating Arizona consumer fraud laws and paid restitution. It was repeatedly in the news. I wanted to ask you about their homestead business. Mm -hmm. And the focus of a 1997 ABC 15 investigation. Every dollar that I make is an honest dollar. Crane mailed out thousands of official looking documents telling people to send money for homestead protection. Or they could lose their homes. Most people never need this. We played that 1997 report for John Willenchek, AIDS attorney. Well, the service is familiar. And that's because John's father is in the story. Real estate attorney Dennis Wilenchik says anyone trying to sell the service is fooling you. In 1997, Dennis Wilenchik criticized Crane's business practices. It's a classic definition of fraud. Now, Dennis is working with John to represent aid, which is funded with Crane's money. The guy that's behind that fronted the money for aid, he called his previous business practices a classic definition of fraud. And to us, we think that's telling. Well, or interesting, to say the least. I don't want to get into any kind of an argument with you. And to anyone questioning Greg Crane's motives. Again, my response is, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. His heart is in the right place here. 
This is what 1,700 lawsuits looks like. This map, every business sued this year by a controversial group filing disability lawsuits. By now, you've probably heard about Advocates for Individuals with Disabilities, or AID. They have filed lawsuit after lawsuit, and it was all over parking lot signs. What you may not have heard, AID is an official IRS charity. And ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscoming discovered that is raising a lot of questions. We've been digging into AIDS tax status for weeks. Let's just say that experts and businesses were surprised to see what aid didn't tell the federal government when it applied to get nonprofit tax free status. This auto body shop, one of the many businesses aid is sued. Why? It had a handicap space, but no sign. Coming at us for one thing, and that's to get the money. Steve Fisher owns the shop. His mother in law has a disability. So it surprised him when Aid rejected a $1,500 settlement offer. They shrugged it off. And when he saw in lawsuits, Aid touts itself as a charity. I'm sure I'm not the only one that would find this not a nonprofit organization. In April, Aid filed his nonprofit application. In July, it was granted, and that caught the attention of Corey Langhofer. It looked to me like what they were doing was uh, suspicious. Langhofer is a well known Valley attorney, one of his firm's practices, nonprofits. So I wrote to them and asked for copies of their tax records. I want to see if they're really complying with the tax law. We sent someone to their office in person to request the documents. Uh, we sent multiple email inquiries. By law, nonprofits must provide records to anyone who asks. They've completely ignored us, and that's illegal. But Aid did send ABC 15 their IRS application, and we brought Langhofer back to show them. It seems clear there were misstatements in here. They didn't tell the IRS everything they should have. Aid didn't tell the IRS about all of the lawsuits they'd be filing. In fact, Aid wrote it would have only four activities, education and awareness, a grant program, administration, and public relations. They don't even use the word lawsuit, litigation, court, any of that in here, period. Could that be a problem for them? It, the fact that they never told the IRS they were going to be filing lawsuits as their primary activity and primarily funding themselves through lawsuit settlements, that's a really big problem. An omission is obvious to an expert lawyer as an auto shop owner. The lawsuits, that, that probably should have been number one. Now it turns out there's another side to this, literally. In response, aid employee Alex Callen sent a statement saying aid actually has two sides. The charity side, aid foundation, and a private business side, aid LLC. At first, Callen claims they only plan to use the business side to file lawsuits and donate money to the charity. But now, the charity has been used to file 1,200 lawsuits. And Langhofer says the fact that, that wasn't disclosed to the IRS and how the money moves between the two sides still raises questions. When you send records like this into the IRS, you sign them under penalty of perjury. So of course, it's very important for them to be telling the truth in these applications. Now, we also reached out to the IRS, but a spokesperson told us federal law prohibits him from discussing specific nonprofits or cases. In the newsroom, Dave Biscoving. ABC 15 News. Fifth beware again. The controversial group that's flooded the valley with disability lawsuits is sending more people to do more inspections at many of the places it's already sued. But why? Here's ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscovic. Advocates for Individuals with Disabilities is trying to quickly fix big potential deficiencies in their cases. See, in most cases when aid sues, it only lists itself, the organization, not a person. And a federal judge recently tossed a case saying you can't sue if someone wasn't actually harmed. And it appears aid is worried about 1,200 of its remaining cases being in jeopardy because it's now trying what could be called a one-size fix all. In this new motion, Aid is asking a judge to add three men to all of its open lawsuits. They are Aid Director David Ritzenthaler and two brothers named Jason and Danny Thomas, who are right now reinspecting every business. The move is also a big reversal after one of Aid's lawyers told us their cases were legally legitimate. So he doesn't have to go for you to sue the business? Absolutely correct. Really? Yeah. After ABC 15's reports, the Attorney General's office convinced a judge to combine all open aid lawsuits and let the state join in with the goal of dismissing every case. Attorney General Mark Burnovich says it's his job to enforce ADA law. I'm pushing back against these frivolous, what we call frivolous lawsuits, and I just think it's about time someone did something. That's why aid is aggressively going after the AG. In aid's new motion, they also ask a judge to force the AG's office to do periodic ADA inspections and... Aid dropped off these boxes at the AG's office. Inside, 
Aid claims there are 9,000 complaints of violations in parking lots of businesses they haven't sued yet. Now, the next hearing in the big AG slash aid case is next week. But in the meantime, we're going to be digging deeper into the backgrounds of those new brothers that aid is using to inspect businesses. In the newsroom, Dave Biscoving, ABC 15 News. Complete 180 for the controversial group suing over parking lots all over the valley. Advocates for individuals with disabilities plan to add two new victims to 1,200 of their disability lawsuits, but now they're backing off and they're blaming ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscovic. Just days ago, aid hoped to fix big potential deficiencies in their cases because a person with disabilities never actually visited the places they sued. And it turns out the person they wanted to send to re-inspect the businesses is a felon fresh out of prison. And why are they mad at us? Just watch. In a public, high-profile, unprecedented case involving the Attorney General and making a lot of headlines, Aid filed this, seeking to add two brothers, Jason and Danny Thomas, as plaintiffs. It says Jason is an amputee and Danny, his caretaker, regularly drives him around in a vehicle that uses van-accessible parking spaces. But these are Danny Thomas's mug shots for felony theft, shoplifting, violating probation. And Danny just got out of prison in June. Did Aid know about his background before? And why did Aid suddenly pull them off the case? In a press release, Alex Callen, Aid's de facto representative, said it's because David Biscoving is now viciously attacking, pressuring, intimidating, and harassing Jason and Danny. Now you may remember Callen from one of our previous stories. Would you guys like to leave? We found some of Aid's offices had the same parking lot issues as the businesses they were suing. Your story is garbage news. Now here's the truth about the Thomas brothers. We never contacted them. In fact, we never even asked Aid about them. Because they were homeless, we couldn't find good contact information for them. And because they have common names, we didn't even know what Jason and Danny Thomas they were. In fact, it wasn't until Aid put out their press release publicly revealing their personal and medical stories that we knew for sure. And here's something else we just learned. Aid may be planning to add a different new person to the cases. We don't know who yet. The court records haven't been filed, but there is a hearing scheduled for next week. In the newsroom, Dave Biscoving, ABC 15 News. Let me tell you that Channel 15, in my opinion, is the worst media outlet ever. This is attorney Peter Stroynick, and he and his organization have sued 1,700 people this year in drive-by, copy-and-paste lawsuits. ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscoving has been investigating them for months, and tonight he caught up with Stroynick outside of court because of a brand new lawsuit he just filed. And this time, he's going after the attorney general's office. Stroynick and his group Advocates for Individuals with Disabilities or AID have suffered a lot of legal defeats recently, but now they're fighting back and they're suing the Attorney General's office, claiming the state has failed to enforce ADA law. So Stroynick, can I talk to you about your lawsuit that you filed against the AG last week? Mr. Stroynick doesn't want to talk about AID's newest lawsuit. Your reports are so inaccurate that I will no longer interview with you. Here's the backstory. After we exposed how AID does business, suing businesses mostly for signage issues and then demanding thousands to settle, the Attorney General stepped in and has asked a judge to dismiss every one of AID's open lawsuits. But in response, AID filed these 9,000 ADA complaints with the AG in September. And now they're suing because they claim the AG didn't do anything with those cases. Something the AG's office says isn't true. Were you here a minute ago when I told you that I don't talk to lying reporters like yourself? Mr. Stroynick, with all due respect, the courts have found you to be misleading, using bait and switch, bad bait tactics. So we're going to ask the questions regardless whether or not you like the reporter or not. Right now, hundreds of controversial drive-by lawsuits totally dismissed, and it's all because of an ABC 15 investigation. Yeah, the judge making a major decision from the bench, and ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscobing was there. Yeah, it's a decision no one saw coming from the judge today. And after the hearing, we tried catching up with the people behind all of these lawsuits, and let's just say they weren't too excited to answer our questions. Mr. Stroynick, can I get a response about uh, the decision today to dismiss the cases? This is Peter Stroynick, attorney for Advocates for Individuals with Disabilities, and they sued 1,700 businesses last year. I do not give interviews to fake news, which is what your outfit is. Stroynick just lost and lost big. Maricopa County Superior Court Judge David Telemonte tossed AIDS open lawsuits, a number that could be as high as 1,000 cases. None of them alleged that distinct and powerful image. The main reason, no one with disabilities actually went to the business's aid suit. That was something, in a previous interview, Stroynick admitted and was adamant wasn't needed. So he doesn't have to go for you to sue the business? Absolutely correct. Really? Yeah. 
But Judge Telemonte disagreed, and the Attorney General's office, which took on these lawsuits because of our reports, hammered that point in court. So will aid appeal? What will happen next? It's hard to say. We want to try and give people out there an answer. You see what a liar you are? Nobody watches your, your uh, Channel 15 anymore. Well, in this case, the Attorney General did. Frankly, I think your reporting has really brought a lot of attention, not only here in Arizona, but nationally to this issue. Well, you, you know, know why? You know why? Because the news you have is false news. The AG watched and you brought this case and it got your cases dismissed, so. Now after today, you might think aid is done, but you'd be wrong. In fact, we found the people behind aid have now expanded into other states. You gotta see our investigation. It's coming up at six. In Mesa, Dave Biscovic, ABC 15 News. They hammered businesses across the valley with their drive-by parking lot lawsuits. And in fact, in just six months, advocates for individuals with disabilities filed 1,700 cases. Yeah, but now ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscobing has uncovered the people behind the controversial group are expanding to our neighboring states. After we exposed AIDS controversial methods, the Attorney General's office stepped in and a judge just dismissed all of their Arizona cases. Well, now we've discovered some of the people behind aid have helped create new groups and are suing in states to the north, east, and west. And the moon, it's a ride. Family's important. It's a pot. That's a moon. Ralph Aiello and his wife Carmela own this pizzeria near Denver. It's hard. You know, we're hanging in there. We're not getting rich. We work every day. And they may not know it, but the disability lawsuit they were just served was baked by the same people responsible for suing 1,700 businesses in Arizona. I feel it's a shame that people are using the legal system in a negative way, in what it seems it's a scam. Working with reporter Ryan Luby at our sister station in Denver, ABC 15 confirmed Arizona's notorious serial sewer aid is connected to new groups that have filed over 250 lawsuits in Colorado, Nevada, and New Mexico. Now, making these connections wasn't simple. Here's how we figured it out. First, we found sections of AIDS lawsuits identical to ones in Colorado. Colorado's lawsuits, word for word, the same as the ones in New Mexico and Nevada. The websites for those groups registered with the Mesa address at this UPS store, at this specific mailbox. That mailbox used by this guy, Levi Leba. And Levi Leba was once a director for AID. We tried reaching Mr. Leba to ask him about all of this. But we did later reach him by phone. Leba told us he did help set up the websites, but he's had nothing to do with the lawsuits. But we still had questions for AID about another telling connection, connecting AID to these other groups. And it involves me personally. Now we've shown you how much aid appreciates my reporting. Your story is garbage news. Channel 15, in my opinion, is the worst media outlet ever. You're making an embarrassment of your news station. David. And the country. State. Well, we discovered a few of their other websites, WashingtonADA.com and KansasADA.com, were set up using my personal home address. For what reason? They won't say. That is why my personal address was used to register some ADA websites. Anything on that? I'm, I'm sorry. Were you not here when I said we don't interview with you? And when we asked about the lawsuits in the other states. Do so you guys have a comment on that? I don't know if you were here a minute ago when I said I don't give interviews to you because you lie. Well, I'm still going to ask you questions. You are fake news. But what we do know, these lawsuits are as well received here as they are in Colorado. I want to stand up for what's right and I think this is wrong and somebody's got to stop this because they'll keep doing it to everybody else. Advocates for individuals with disabilities filed 1,700 disability lawsuits. Our investigation disrupted their money-making operation here in the Valley. But they've moved into neighboring states, and now ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscobing has learned they're running into trouble yet again. In New Mexico, aid is now being reviewed by that state's attorney general's office. And with the pressure building, their star plaintiff has flipped on aid, telling all in an interview. Alyssa Carton lives in New Mexico, and she's had a disability her entire life. I have the worst case of spina bifida. So when she saw an online job posting to help improve ADA access and get paid, she got excited. Then the lawsuits began, 99 of them, in her name. I, I understand how people could be upset. She wishes she knew then what she knows now. The people behind aid here in Arizona were the people behind her cases. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, I have some regrets. I just kind of want to get all this out in the air and, and, you know, protect myself from scrutiny. In a statement, aid denies any involvement in Alyssa's cases. 
But she gave us the names of several specific aid employees she speaks to, including a woman named Emily Branch. And if you've seen our original investigation, Ms. Branch is the aid employee who recorded us when we found ADA violations at the place where aid does business. She ended up breaking her shoe and because of the hot pavement, followed us in a car. We've also asked aid about their involvement in other states outside of court. Do you guys have a comment on that? I don't know if you were here a minute ago when I said I don't give interviews to you because you lie. Well, I'm still going to ask you questions. You are fake news. But here's some truth from someone who's worked with them. I probably could have done a little bit more research, and I didn't, you know. So I got played because of me. Dave Biscoving. ABC 15 News. It's a so-called advocacy group flooding the valley with disability lawsuits, and now they are running into trouble in other states as well. Tonight, legal experts say that trouble is only going to get worse, and it is because of what ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscoping just discovered. When our investigation pushed advocates individuals with disabilities out of Arizona, they moved into at least three other states using another name. Now they go by litigation management and financial services, and we got a hold of one of their contracts. Now this is supposed to be confidential, a secret, but we got it and it exposes a lot about their operation. This is Alyssa Carton. She lives in New Mexico. Court records show she sued 99 businesses in her area this year. Now she says she regrets getting involved. I, I understand how people can be upset. And we're starting to understand how this whole lawsuit filing machine really works. This funding agreement between litigation management services and plaintiffs like Alyssa, it says the company will pay the plaintiff $50 for every lawsuit. From the money made in those lawsuits, the company gets first grab at the proceeds. Also, the company pays for the attorney and court fees. Here's why attorneys tell me this contract could be a problem. See, federal lawsuits cost about $400 to file. In many cases, we found the plaintiffs filed these special requests asking the court to waive the expensive fees because they claim they were unable to afford them. But in those requests, they didn't tell the court about their income from litigation management services or their confidential business agreement. So if we really break this all down, there's a for-profit company using people with disabilities to file lawsuits for free so that company can confidentially rake in all of that cash from those cases. Is that allowed, ethical, or even legal? Those are some unprecedented questions for judges and attorneys to figure out. In the newsroom, Dave Biscoving, ABC 15 News. They called themselves advocates. They sued 1,700 businesses and demanded thousands of dollars over disability parking signs. Well, now the Attorney General's office is going after them for fraud. It's a major development stemming from Dave Biscoping's investigation. Even though the AG got a judge to toss all of these lawsuits, the state and dozens of businesses still want payback, literally. They've asked a judge to sanction advocates for individuals with disabilities and force them to pay back legal fees. And as part of that process, the state also wants special hearings and evidence to expose what they call fraud on the court. How long have you been in business, Tom? 31 years. How long have you been here? Uh, about five years at this location. Any, uh, any ADA complaints in those five years? No. Just this one? Just until we got this one. When Tom Atkinson's water heating business got sued for $7,500, it didn't take long to realize there was a mistake. Yeah, you know. yeah they sent us a picture of their, our neighbor's parking lot. Wait, so, this is, so the picture they sent you isn't even your building? No. Our building was in the background, but it's over here. It's one case, but it represents a lot of reasons why the state alleges aid was operating a fraudulent money-making scheme to squeeze millions of dollars out of businesses. This strikes me as the kind of thing that gives lawyers, quite frankly, a bad name. So when people think of like frivolous lawsuits and you know ambulance chasers, whatever you want to call them, this is what they think of. In a series of new filings, the Attorney General's office says, aid brought lawsuit after lawsuit, full of mistakes, plainly false, copy and pasted, an aid attorney even admitting they were robo-signed. And then in those lawsuits, the state says aid fabricated and lied about thousands of dollars in damages and legal fees that didn't exist. So what does aid say about all of this? Lead attorney Peter Stroynik has repeatedly vowed to never answer my questions again. You see what a liar you are. But Stroynik and other aid officials may very well have to testify under oath, further exposing the true intent of their operation, which to many businesses is already known. We thought from day one it's just a tremendous uh, scam. 
and it's blackmail. It will likely be weeks at a minimum before a judge rules on any of this. But so far, aid has lost every step of this battle. And outside attorneys tell me that if a judge does grant these hearings, it could go very badly for aid and could roll into civil and criminal investigations. In the newsroom, Dave Biscovic, ABC 15 News. I mean, aid's highly controversial. Why would you choose to represent him? We are not making this up. That is former Attorney General Tom Horn, and he's now representing advocates for individuals with disabilities, the serial sewers that filed 1,700 disability lawsuits last year. This means Horn is now going up against his old office, which stepped in to stop the group and its lawsuits. Investigator Dave Biscobing has the exclusive interview. So how and why does Tom Horn fit into all of this? Well, after the lawsuits were filed, the AG's office stepped in and got a judge to dismiss all of AID's cases. And now the state wants the court to hold evidentiary hearings to prove AID engaged in fraud and sanction them. And that's where Horn comes in. He's just been hired to defend AID and its members. You know, one of the things I think is really interesting, which caught my attention, is that the former attorney general is now in litigation against the current attorney general. Why did you choose to... I mean, what do you think about that? I'm in litigation against the Attorney General a lot. Tom Horn is downplaying it. Just look at his smile when we ask him about this case. It's high profile, and the stakes are high for aid. The Attorney General's office says aid was operating a fraudulent money-making scheme to squeeze millions out of businesses with drive-by parking lot lawsuits. I think it's fair to ask, whether you want to answer or not, why you would choose to represent this group. Yeah, as I say, if it's not in my pleadings, I can't comment on it, but I'm, I, I feel very comfortable representing them. Horn says it wasn't unethical for aid to file 1,700 lawsuits, even though a person with disabilities never went to the businesses. That's because he says Arizona law is broad and unclear. Horn says that's the only issue here. He claims all of those fraud allegations should have been previously raised separately by the state and weren't. Therefore, they're now moot points since the cases have been dismissed. It's over. There's, it's not a live case anymore other than this motion. So you're not denying that those things may have happened. You're saying that the state didn't bring it up and should have. I'm not. I'm not saying either way whether they happened. I'm trying to avoid getting into that discussion. But still, Horn's the former attorney general, and we uncovered AIDS behind the scenes money man, Gregory Crane, mm -hmm. has a history of consumer fraud charges, including cases with the attorney general's office. You don't have any sort of reservation, you know, as the former attorney general representing this group? As I told you, I can only comment on things that are in our pleadings. Okay. And given AIDS history, we had another question for Horn. I hate to ask this question. Um, are you worried about getting paid? They didn't pay their previous outside counsel. I'm not worried. Here's the recent lawsuit to prove it and the judgment showing the hefty unpaid legal bill. They owe them $80,000. I'm not worried. Do you, were you aware of that? I wasn't aware of it, but I still am not worried. In Dave's interview, Horn says he is confident aid will win on this issue. We will have to wait and see. It could be months before all of this is decided. I'm investigator Dave Biscopy, and tonight, more bad news for the people who spent most of last year suing businesses all across the valley. A judge just ruled they'll have to testify under oath. After getting all of Advocates for Individuals with Disabilities open cases dismissed, the Attorney General's office accused the group of fraud and asked the court to hold evidentiary hearings in order to sanction the group. Judge David Telemonte said yes today. Now, if you need a quick refresher, this group filed 1,700 disability lawsuits over parking lot signs and was demanding 7,500 a case, even though a person with disabilities never visited the businesses. A date for the hearings wasn't set, but we do know it will be at least several months away. I'll keep you posted. In the newsroom, Dave Biscoving, ABC 15, Arizona. Channel 15 has done a great service uh, to the public here in exposing this. U.S. Senator Jeff Flake taking action, and it's all because ABC 15 exposed a so-called advocacy group flooding the valley with disability lawsuits. Tonight, Senator Flake sharing his plan with ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscobank. Senator Flake says he's introducing a new bill this week to stop what he calls an abuse of the Americans with Disabilities Act. It would give businesses 120 days to fix issues before a lawsuit could be filed. We're trying to get people to comply with the law and actually uh, do something good here instead of just line the pockets of these uh, these trolls. And by trolls, Senator Jeff Flake is talking about groups like Advocates for Individuals with Disabilities or AID. It's a racket. It's definitely increasing. AIDS filed 1,700 lawsuits in the Valley this year. They're now the most prolific ADA sewers anywhere. Their cases adding to a surge in ADA lawsuits nationally, up 150 percent since 2013. What they're doing is abusing the law. Um, if you talk to genuine disability groups and people who are genuinely concerned about 
without access for the disabled, uh, they decry these tactics. On that point, he's correct. You know, people with disabilities don't want more lawsuits. But Phil Pangrazio, director of Ability360, and other disability rights organizations say they're also leery of changing the ADA. Anything where we're talking about changing the ADA, we're going to go in the wrong direction. A similar House bill, H.R. 3765, is also working through Congress right now. But bills with ADA changes have died on Capitol Hill before. That's what makes this difficult. How do you stop someone exploiting the law? while protecting someone's civil rights. Obviously, they're in business to do business. They want to have their doors open to everyone. Unlike most ADA serial sewers, aid files its cases in state court. Why? Well, it's cheaper. That means fixes also need to be made to Arizona's version of the ADA. And that's something State Senator John Cavanaugh told me he's going to do when our next legislative session begins. In the newsroom, Dave Biscoving. ABC 15 Hundreds News. of thousands of you watched, commented, and shared our stories about a controversial group flooding the valley with disability lawsuits. Well, it turns out Arizona lawmakers heard you, and now they're working to fix the problem. Here's ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscoving. Down at the Capitol, multiple bills have been introduced to try and curb these serial sewers and entice businesses to make fixes before getting sued. So far, we know of two bills that have been filed. The first, Senate Bill 1198, would give businesses a period of time to fix problems before a lawsuit could be filed. It will face resistance from disability rights groups who say it goes too far. Now, there's also House Bill 2214. It gives businesses a much larger and immediate tax write-off if they make disability access improvements. Consider it a financial sweetener to get businesses ADA compliant. Dustin, it's official Arizona businesses will now have a 30-day grace period before facing a disability lawsuit. Governor Doug Ducey just signing that new law tonight. Lawmakers crafted the bill after ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscoving exposed how a local group filed 1,700 cases in a year. The lawsuits were filed over parking signs and demanded thousands of dollars to settle. In addition to the grace period, the new bill also gives judges more power to punish attorneys who file frivolous lawsuits.